Welcome to Ottawa Real Estate Talk with Miguel Vidal and Christopher Shane of the Home Guys team at Solid Rock Realty. This episode is brought to you by Oakwood. If you're looking to build your custom dream home, regardless of your budget, Oakwood Custom Homes is your one-stop shop for before and after services. Oakwood is a recognized innovation leader that you can trust and rely on for a quality build that's both on budget and exactly as you imagined. Check them out at oakwood.ca. Hey everybody, Miguel Vidal here with the Home Guys team from Solid Rock Realty. Welcome to episode 25 of Ottawa Real Estate Talks. You can kind of see I'm flying solo here today. Uh, we're crazy busy right now. The real estate market is insane, as you've heard from our podcast before. So uh, today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about investing in real estate and actually how you can use the equity in your home to invest in real estate. So we're going to discuss a, like some numbers. I've got a blank board behind me. I'm going to put some numbers up on the board. Hopefully this all makes sense and it helps you guys moving forward. Uh, and uh, let's get started, shall we? Okay, okay. So let's say that you have purchased your home and you bought it, we'll say five years ago and you own a townhouse in Barhaven. Five years ago, you paid 280 thousand dollars for it five years ago let's say the value of that townhouse now is 500 now okay well now you're sitting with two hundred and thirty thousand dollars what can you do with that well if you go to the banks or your mortgage broker, essentially they will give you 80% of the value of your home. Okay. So if we pull out my trusty calculator here, all right. So we're going to do 500 times 80%. So that's 400,000. So 80% of the value of 500 is 400 K. Okay. So now what happens is you've really, you're only really going to be able to go to the bank and you're only going to be real, really be able to access 130,000. Okay. So how do you access that 130,000 and how does it benefit you moving forward? So you can either pull out a Pelco or a home equity line of credit, um, or, or you can refi. So you can refinance. Now, what's the difference between the two? So a home equity line of credit, super easy to do. You can go into your bank, you can call your mortgage broker. Normally it's easier to just go into your bank, talk to your bank rep, and they will set up a home equity line of credit. Scotiabank has a home equity line of credit where uh, for as you make your mortgage payments down on your home, then what happens is your home equity line of credit increases. So if you make your mortgage payment, then the percentage that goes towards the actual mortgage will then get added to your home equity line of credit. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. A refi is different. A refi is like you're taking the value of the home, which is now 80%, so 400,000, let's say after you bought it five years ago, so your mortgage isn't 280, your mortgage is probably sitting even less than that, but to refinance it, it's you're applying for a mortgage all over again, but now you're gonna pull your mortgage up to this value here, 80% of, of, of whatever that was. So now you're, pull, you're gonna have a mortgage of 400,000, but you're going to have that amount of equity available to you. So which option is best? It totally depends on your situation. This takes a lot of time and effort. So you gotta go to a mortgage broker. Uh, you, there might be penalties involved with regards to uh, switching your mortgage at that time, but you could be saving because your interest rate might be higher. So now you're getting into a lower interest rate. There's, but there's a, there's a lot of factors involved with the refi. The Helco is super easy. Just go into your bank, talk to your, uh, talk to someone in the bank about opening up a, a home equity line of credit. 
super easy to do. Okay, so now you've got all this here sitting here and you go into the bank, you've got your Halco or your refi, and now you've got all this extra cash sitting with you. Well, what do you do? Well, you take that money and what do you do? You take 20% of whatever it is that you wanna buy and you put it down on an investment property. Here's the thing. People, when they go to buy an investment property, they think, well, I'm going to try and buy myself like a big, massive duplex or triplex. Let's go big or go home. Be smart. Super easy. Buy yourself a small little condo. You've never invested before. So this is your first property. So let's start small and smart. Start with a, start with a condo, a small condo, easy to rent out. You put your 20%. You make sure that every, like all your expenses are covered, okay? Now, now all of a sudden you've got a condo that you own. So let's say you bought the condo and it's, it, let's say you paid 350 for it. Okay. You're going to take 20% of 350, 350 times 20%. So that's 70,000. Okay. So you're going to put 70,000 on here which is the 20% that you have to put down to avoid CMHC, which is going to make things easier for you to get the mortgage in the first place. And it's a rental that you're purchasing right now. So your mortgage is now going to be sitting at about $280,000, right? So what you have to figure out is that you can rent that unit now to cover whatever the mortgage payments are on this, plus your condo fees, plus your property taxes if you can. Now, if the condo and, and the, sorry, if the rent can cover all three of these payments, you're golden. You don't need to be making money on it in the first five years. Because really what'll happen is you get your tenants in there, they're covering the costs. So after five years, you're 280, which you haven't paid a dime to, your tenants have been paying, is now going to be worth probably, that, that mortgage should be down maybe somewhere around 250 after five years. But the value of the condo, which you paid 350 for, potentially may have increased over those five, over those five years and maybe it's now worth 420. Okay, but you've got a mortgage sitting there of 250. Well, what's 80% of 420? So times 80%, that's 336. And if you have a mortgage of 250, you're talking about $86,000. You go through the whole scenario again. So you've initially, you've used your home to leverage yourself moving forward to purchase your first investment property. Now that first investment property after five years of breaking even, you've now leveraged your first investment property to now do the same thing. You pull out a Helco or a home equity line of credit on that first investment or you refinance it, pull that money out. And then you use that 86,000 that is now the value of what you have in there because your mortgage is sitting now at 250 after five years. And the value of the home has increased to 420. So now you've got 336,000 available, which is 80% of 420. So you've got $86,000 in equity. Well, now you just do the same thing. You go, you pull out your, your Halco on your investment or your refi on your investment and you use those funds to purchase yourself another property. And that's how you move forward buying investment properties, technically not even really using any of your money. So the thing is, is that banks, banks will, they'll give you the money. If you've got, they will cap you at some point, but if you've got a good mortgage broker who knows how to, who knows how to work for you and work with you and work with the banks, you should 100% be able to get ahead doing this stuff. And, and right now is the time to do it. If you've got the funds available in your home, you should be purchasing real estate. And realistically right now, it, it just, it, it does not make sense to not be doing it because this is going to put you ahead. Um, 
uh, you know, as we move forward here in real estate, you don't ever have to worry about the value of real estate dropping when you purchase it as an investment, because realistically, you're not making any payments on it. The tenant is going to be the one that's covering the cost for you moving forward. All you're doing is just basically pulling the equity from the property after five years and using it to funnel to purchase yourself more properties. It's a super easy, easy thing to do. Problem is, is that sometimes people think it's more complicated than what it is, but it's not. The thing is, is that you have to be very careful. You have to make sure that you're not living above your means. So you don't need to be having two cars that you have leased and your car payments are whatever, six, you know, 600 for one and then another 700 for the other. You don't need that. If you're smart with your money and you've got a property and you've got enough equity in it that you can purchase one property to move forward to the next, like in life, then you should be able to get this done as long as you've got a good real estate agent or team behind you moving forward. And that's what we can do. We can help you move forward in life using the equity in your home to purchase another property, then waiting five years and using the equity in that investment property to purchase another investment property. So Anyways, hopefully this has been very informative and you guys understand what I'm talking about. If you have any questions or you want to reach out to us, by all means, feel free to check us out at ottawarealestate.ca or thehomeguys.com. You can check us out on uh, social media. So on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Instagram, uh, our podcast is available on uh, Spotify, Google, and Apple. And well, since nobody else is here, I'll say it. If we're not your realtors, we should be. Thanks everybody. Cheers. <laughs>